Hey, what's up? Give me some of that old time precision, huh? Yeah, I'm using the stones here to uh, finish up deburring the, uh, the knee waves here. And these things just work really good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to set that back. Now, on these old machines, on these new, on these old time machines, you know, they use the dials. And the dials are graduated in uh, 1,000s. So, you know, about the best you can expect is about plus or minus 1,000. So it makes sense. The, uh, the more jet bore it has uh, Verniers, it breaks it down to 10,000s. And uh, so, you know, that breaks it down to uh, plus or minus uh, a tenth of a thousandth. And a jet board can kind of s spoil you just a little bit. But there's some, there's some ways, of course, to get more accuracy out of an old time machine like this. Uh, for example, the axle, old axles that were laid out there at one time, somebody put this digital readout on it really a nice readout and it came with the scales and I can actually adapt it to this old brown and sharp melon machine but uh, I'm I want to put this on a on a hard dense chucker which I think I get more use out of it so on uh, this old time melon machine what you could do is uh, adapt a set of uh, end measuring rods, see? And you have to add a little trough or a holder, and I'm gonna do that. Um, I found just at the hardware store, they have some extruded uh, aluminum strips that'll work just fine. I can adapt that to the table slides. So I'll take the camera loose and show you a couple things that might, you might find interesting. So, what I have to do is uh, put a trough, and, and they actually, I think that these holes may be for that here, but I'll rig, I'll rig it up. I don't need the, the table stops, the regular table stops. So I'll hook a trough up, and the kit here has these uh, um, uh, graduated and tenths, uh, really nice micrometer heads. And these, these are some of the finest tools made during the time these end uh, measuring rods. So you can put this in here and uh, various uh, lengths of um, these standards is what they are. And with the micrometer, see, you can uh, get uh, split the inches down to tenths. So if you want to do eight inches, then you put a combination of rods and uh, set up. And then you use a dial indicator to uh, bring the travel to the rods and the indicator. Then you take the rods out or add rods to it, depending where you're going, and then go by the zero of the indicator. And that's how you hit tenths is uh, using the verniers on here and then a dial indicator to uh, set your distance. Okay, now there's an interesting thing. And this happens on hard inch too, on hard inch lace. This is a brown and sharp melon machine. And it's with these dovetails. You see that? And the offset screw. You see the screw is offset. And what happens when you're running the table back, you're pushing it on the side is where the nut is because this is offset from center. See that? So it pushes it. It shoves it over more to this side. Then when you pull it back, then it's dragging and then it's lagging on that side. That is because of the clearance needed for this thing to slide, you know, be able to move it and have the oil on it, see? So it's close to two thousandths 
of an inch that you're going to have to have for clearance. And then you get this yaw from that clearance like that when you're going back and forth. <laughs> like I said, it's not very much, a couple thousand, see? But see, that that's, uh, you can end up with a thousandth error just off that. And uh, that's almost 10 times error of a jig bore. And that, you know, that can kind of bug you if you're trying to do something a little more accurate on these uh, uh, standard machines. <laughs> okay, so you can use these end measuring rods, okay? For set, right? All right. Now, it's very simple to compensate for that yaw. And what you do is, you, is um, if you're going to start cutting, you want to run it back and then pull it. If you're coming this way, you want to run it back, then pull it about an inch before uh, the tool enters the cut. And you want to do the same on the hard inch, too, uh, because you have that yaw, because the hand wheel on the side here is pulling, then pushing when it's going back and forth. And with the needed clearances, see? So like on the hard inch chucker, to, to get the best accuracy, if I was cutting something, I'd move the carriage back about an inch, then bring it back. Otherwise, that yaw straightening out is going to be in your cut. <laughs> it's really true. Okay, um, speaking of the hard dense chucker, I found an accessory for the... I got an old one out here. Hey, I was talking about my hard dense chucker with considerable wear before the camera shut off. Uh, I found a really uh, handy tool for one if you're into hard dense chuckers. And that's this slide tool here. Let's see. What's the number? It's a C6-B. And it's a, an angle cutting tool slide. And you move this lever set it down here you see and you can cut angles with it oh get it centered kind of hard to do it with one hand but that makes uh, that chucker uh, quite a bit handier i've got some uh, models and things like that i want to make uh, uh, screws for miniature screws, nuts and bolts and stuff. So I'll get miniature hex stock and uh, I can use that chucker with dies and, you know, and uh, actually the little uh, uh, bevel or uh, angle slide. So you can, you can rotate that on the turret at any angle. Uh, we'll make nice looking beveled heads and things like that. You can really kind of dress stuff up, make it look nice and do it very quickly because uh, those chuckers are <laughs> really quite, uh, quite fast. Years ago over in Spokane, there was a machine shop called Freeborn Tool. And this is like back in the 70s. And they like had up front, they had eight bridge ports with eight people running them. <laughs> and that's kind of like the hard dense chucker. It's, um, it's a, a great machine, but it requires a human behind it at all times. And that's why they're kind of obsolete, but kind of a handy tool in the shop. So I'm excited about, uh, about getting that going. But see, that's got this dovetail, the same kind of dovetail here. And um, it has yaw. That's where I discovered that problem, is uh, holding tolerance on the chuckers. And, you know, the, the, the hard edge holds extremely good tolerance, the same as the Monarch 10 E. If, you know, it, it would do care. So that's really, I'm really kind of excited about that. Uh, finding this tool for the uh, um, chucker, kind of building a fire under me to, to get that thing going too. I've got, I've got, I managed to sneak out here. I'm uh, working on the house pretty feverishly. Uh, I would like to find a, play, uh, a larger place, and I, oh, that's very much possible. And speaking of that, uh, <laughs> talk about stuff, you know, like these machines here, like this mill, um, and that drill press got drug out in the weather here uh, in this little town here. 
and uh, there's a there's still a lane sitting out there in the weather and other stuff at that um, recovery yard. And the reason for that is, is the price of heated space, you know, like uh, this little garage here. There, uh, there's not a whole lot of garages on these uh, uh, in the, this neighborhood with these kind of small houses, but this one's got one. And the other ones that have garages have somebody living in them. You know, like grandma, or they're renting them out. So uh, the it cost uh, a lot of money to um, store these machine tools, and then other means of storage is very expensive too. It's either got uh, a classic car sitting in it, or a bunch of them, or a motorhome. See. And uh, one of the biggest booms around this small town right now is storage units. And uh, they're building high density housing in the neighborhoods and things like that. I'm going to opt out from that and let them uh, have fun. I'm going to get a little bit more rural is what I'm thinking about doing. So we'll see how that works out. But if I have to stay here, I can stay here and uh, kick the garage out just a little bit and uh, go that direction. Anyway, I hope you're all doing good on this Friday. I'm uh, out here doing it. I've got, I got a little projects I want to do uh, on a couple little things. And uh, I'm still kind of cleaning up that uh, uh, old uh, monarch there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and slide that out and move stuff around in here. So get that old axle set in here. That's that's going to be quite a bit of fun. Okay, well, I'm going to get back to this finish uh, um stoning the dovetails here and uh i'll be back okay have a good one